you mentioned websites that don't cooperate. You mean Ryanair, right? <laughs> they have no API and you have to do scrapping and things like that. Among the others. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, what else doesn't cooperate? My air conditioning. Boom, I joined the, the two together. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so this talk is about my, my fight against my air conditioning. So I can go from a dumb machine to something I can use from my phone um, through all these non-open source services like, like Google Home, like, Google, like Alexa. Uh, the talk is tangentially related to free software. I mean, I used a lot of free software and I tried to, I'll mention what I've used, but I'm, I'm here for the beers and the food. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, this is my name. It's not my own, my, my sole project. Like, uh, I collaborated with two guys who know more than me. Uh, Joan Monserrat, who is uh, works with electronics, so he knows better the hardware stuff. And Marce, who is another computer guy, a uh, computer science guy. Like me, I'm a computer engineer. Uh, so this is um, our our enemy. Like this is the the thing, <laughs> the, the the target uh, of our hacking. It's an air conditioning. This is the only remote that I have to change the temperature, etc. And it's not infrared. Like for infrared air conditioning, it's very easy to hack because they sell some things that they don't really decode the protocol, but they replay it. So you set a temperature, you spy on the signal, and then you can replay it, and it, it's very easy to do. But this guy, not like that. Um, the slides are in Catalan, by the way, um, in case you didn't know this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, the, the goal here is to take this uh, thing and make it so I can change the temperature without getting up from the sofa. Uh, the thing is from 2010 like, or something, so before uh, modern Wi-Fi connected air conditioning uh, things were invented. So this is the board, like this is behind the control, the, the, the remote controller, and it has uh, three wires that go from this to that, and that's how these two things talk. But we don't know a lot more about it. So the first thing I did was see what the hell this these cables do, right? Like, there's one that's easy to find, which is ground. Ground usually has the, the thicker tracks, and you, there are lots of components, like capacitors, that have one leg that always goes to ground, so it's easy to identify which one it is. And then when you have found ground with a tester, with a polyometer, a multimeter in English, you can see the voltage, at least you can know the basics. So we know that this device uses 12 volts. But, yeah, what else, right? Like, there's more going on in those cables that let me change the temperature and these kind of things. So, I use one of these things, a logic analyzer. These things used to be expensive, but nowadays they are 10 bucks on AliExpress. Uh, they have a USB interface, and then lots of pins. You plug cables on those pins, and then with some software, you can see what the hell is going through the cable. Like you can see the the highs and lows, like the ones and zeros. Um, I use Sigrog, which is open source. It's a tool, very nice to use these things. It can use uh, logic analyzers, but also oscilloscopes. Like it's the best, it's the best shit for for this thing. And this is the interface. Like Sigrog is command line, but then they have pulse view. Of course, it's command line. But then there's pulse view, also open source, and you can given two cables see the, the signal. And it also knows some of the protocols that are normally used. Like for example, this I2C, which is used in many places. And if, uh, if you specify which protocol, it can decode this into actual data. No? So this is a, an address, this is a write of this data, etc. This is not the case of my AC though. Uh, that's just an example. So first step, we want to plug the AC to the data analyzer, right, to the logic analyzer. But we cannot, because it's 12 volts, and these things use like three or five max. So we need to use uh, a very simple circuit. 
that's a voltage converter. You give it 12 volts, uh, you want three volts, you plug these two volts, the, these two tensions on this formula, and it gives you the values for some uh, <coughs> resistance, for some resistors, the, and you build this, and it works. Um, and this is the setup. These are the cables, and here I plug the, the different resistors to, to lower the voltage from 12 to 3, so this can read it. Um, just, yeah, well, two because there are two cables and one for the ground. Like, like one extra cable for the ground that you also have to plug. And this is what I saw. So, progress. Uh, one of the cables, not interesting, just <coughs> power. The other cable has some signal. Cool. Uh, we can already see some patterns, right? Like there's silence, then three packets, silence, then three packets. Well, you zoom in. You see like ones and zeros happening, and this happens all the time. Even if I don't press, I don't change temperature or anything, the thing is sending data. Like the two devices are talking several times a, a second, sending this data. But we don't know what the hell it is. Well, I don't know. Um, oh yeah, and also sorry. Even if the device, if the air conditioning is off, <coughs> this was being sent all the time. So the, the device are on, and the on-off signal is just like a, a beat that you toggle, right? It's not a hard off, um, the power off. How did you figure out that you have a space and then three packets? This is what the program tells me. Like, this is a screenshot of the program. So uh, when you plug it, uh, when you do this, this reads the signal and gives you this. You, you see this right away, like you don't have to do anything. Like the, the logic analyzer can read the cable and can see, okay, I got no, no information, then some information, then no information, and it plots the, you can start recording, and you can stop recording after you have some data. Uh, this is a capture, as far as far I understand, this is a time capture. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is, I don't know, it's, it probably says. So this is one second to four seconds. So this is half a second. Um, so well, seeing this, uh, I didn't knew, didn't know what 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 this could be. Uh, but it looked like like the first thing is like okay, it's it's a single cable, right? So is the communication unidirectional? Like it goes from the controller to the air conditioning, because there's only one cable, right? But actually, no. The, if I actually unplug one of the two devices from the logic analyzer, because the logic analyzer is in the middle, right? Like there's a cable, there's one device on one side, the other device on the other, and I'm in the middle. So I see what, hap what, what goes through the cable, but I don't really see the direction, right? So I assume it's the controller talking to the device, <coughs> but I don't know exactly. So what I did is unplug one of the sides, and, and see, uh, and from the three packets, I only saw, saw two when the controller was connected, and one when the ESC was connected. So the protocol is like the controller sends a packet, the, the air conditioning machine replies, and the controller sends another packet for some reason. Um, each of the packets. I, uh, this is something that, of course, I, I would have never figured out, but my friend, uh, Joan Monserrat, who knows these things, saw this and said, this is UAR, UAR, UART, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and we plugged it in the, in the Pulse View, in SIGROG, in the program, and it decoded the data. Of course, I have to adjust the, the bit rate uh, to make it match, but once it matched, this has all kinds of checksums and everything, and it all passed, so this was the protocol. Uh, so for each one of these packets, of these three packets, now we have some hexa. So we don't need the uh, guy who does electronics anymore. We can now <laughs> <laughs> deal with, with bits and bytes, which is what we, what we like. 16 bytes per, per line, per packet. And this is like on CGROG, like on, on, the, on the analyzer, the, a screenshot of it decoding the... <coughs> The bytes. 
Um, I exported that to text and formatted it to make it a bit nicer. And now we have three groups of, I mean, groups of three packets, right? Where they are um, controller, a conditioning controller, controller, conditioning controller. And that's their dialogue. But we still don't know what, they, what the hell they are talking about. They are sending bits. So the next step is try to understand what's, what's going on in this, in this communication, right? Uh, first thing that we notice is that a lot of things don't change from one to the next. Some things change sequentially, like incrementally. And some things change at random. Things that change at random, and at the end, suspicious, probably a checksum. We try it, indeed it's a checksum. Uh, there, there are websites that do checksums, like all the checksums in the universe. So you plug in some bytes, and it gives you like a thousand checksums, and you just need to check which one is yours. Um, so this is sum of bytes module, uh, modulus <coughs> 256. Then uh, another thing that I found is, while I was, I was capturing this, I changed the temperature, and I saw a change here. Oh. So okay, the temperature is here somewhere. I don't know exactly where yet, but progress. Um, and it's nice that even when I don't change the temperature, it seems that it's sending the, the temperature again and again every time, right? So it's quite simple. Like it's just sending the state every second. I don't know. This look look hackable enough. Uh, and, and well, when it changes, it does something, right? Like it's the controller, of course. What changes the temperature is not the, the, the main unit. So the controller sends a new temperature, and the, the main unit like acknowledges that by sending the same back. It's like an ACK. And then the controller, and this never, I never understood why, sends it again. Like yes, yes, indeed, it's it's nice, thing, <laughs> but it's like. I already sent that, why? but for some reason they send it again. So, um, here I thought, if I can change that number, if I can change that message that's being sent, I can, I can ch change the temperature, or I can, I can change any value, right? So that was my, my goal. Uh, modifying, <coughs> like being on the wire, being in the middle, and like reading a message, modifying the, the bits that I like, and, and writing it back. The, it's very cool that the machines are all the time sending messages because I don't need to understand the whole message. I can just edit the bits that I care about without knowing how the IDs are generated or like most of the other data in the packet, right? Like I don't, I don't need to create them from scratch. I just need to learn how to modify them. So. This is how they talk, and this is what I want to do. I want to be here. Um, the controller will send a message to the AC, but I will be in the middle, read it, and forward it, maybe modify it and forward it. Then the AC will send us an ACK, an acknowledge, and I will just pass through, and then this will send something and I will also pass through. Right? So this is the message. That I want to modify it. But the idea is I read the message and I pass it along through the wire. <coughs> yeah? Are you lost or does this no, make no, sense? No, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. question. When, when you change, the first time that you change, so the controller sends it and then you change it. So the third one, the one that we don't know why it sends it, does it, is the same as the one that you modified or it still insists? Uh, I don't remember. Either I change it as well, I think I change it as well. Just I think this guy doesn't, doesn't care. Doesn't care. Okay. So you change the acknowledgement as well, right? So it's like nothing happened. I don't change the acknowledgement, so this guy sees the data change, and that it's okay with it for some reason. Maybe it's meant for, so you can have more than one controller. Yeah. I don't know. No. But you, this, this guy is okay <coughs> with receiving modified data. But I think it still sends the old data, so I also have to modify this one. I, I, I don't know, I did this last winter, so... Um, anyway, how are we going to do the person in the middle attack? With an Arduino, which is open source and open hardware. See, I, I managed to find connection points. 
but we have again a problem with the 12 volts of the air conditioning. The Arduino uses 5 and we can no longer do the trick of lowering the voltage from 12 to 5 because that's okay for the input to the Arduino but then the, Ar the Arduino has to write to the machine, right? And that, that needs to be 12, 12 volts again. So, quick Google search. There's this thing. I need to call Joan again, but there's this <laughs> thing that, as its name implies, it's a logic voltage converter that, bo that works both ways. So, it has a, a transistor and some resistors and apparently it does what we want so we built it boom there works awesome uh, well it's connected it doesn't work actually I mean but it, it, it works in that the Arduino wasn't fried then we could start writing software right we can again dismiss Joan and start writing our shit <coughs> Uh, this is the setup it looks super cool so I wanted to <laughs> I still get the the other voltage converters, so I could still use the logic analyzer, and at the same time here I had the, the bidirectional converter, and the cables were, sh were too short, so I had to join lots of cables together. <laughs> That's why the <laughs> but it looks it looks fancy. Um, okay, so first goal, make it work. Like we just broke it, right? Like we disconnected the cables. This thing is not it's not working. Like we want to at least forward the packets in a transparent way, so that at least I'm not cold during the night. Um, Arduino has a way of reading um, UART, but it didn't work for me because it's meant to read the whole packet, and then it, the library gives it to you, you can read it and do things, and then write it, but that's too slow because the receiving end expects the packet at a certain time, right? So if you have to read it entirely to be able to write it, uh, it's too slow. The machine didn't like that. So what I have to do is to read uh, each bit and forward that already. Maybe modify it, like that's, that's the next step though. But so the first, the, first, the first goal is to read a bit, write a bit, and keep it, because I want to know what I read. But do it. Uh, as fast as possible. It was super easy. 200 lines of code. Uh, done. Working. Code is there. It's open source. Because if not, they wouldn't allow me here. Um, second goal. Uh, I bet, so that code is what? Like Arduino it's, it's code? An Arduino it's, code like yeah. it's, it's Arduino specific. It's this. It's, I don't know if you, if you, if you have used Arduino, but it's like a C. A bit extended to allow <coughs> booleans and like I don't know okay. some other things and, and mainly it has okay. built-in functions to read a pin, write a pin, but it's super simple uh, C. Then okay, next step. Let's modify this thing, right? I have a, a, an array of bits. Um, let's try to change one. And I thought the on-off bit it's easy to change because it's one bit. And it's obvious if it has changed, right? Because the air conditioning, it's either working or not working. Uh, but it's not so easy because remember the checksum at the end, we also need to update that. So what, what I want to do is read these things. As I read, I write. So, so the other machine is I'm transparent. But at some point, I know this is the temperature. I flip that bit. Or sorry, I know that's the on-off. I flip that bit. And then when I get here, since I have the data, I compute the checksum and I also modify these bits. I don't, I don't write what I read. I write the new checksum. Boom, easy, 260 lines of code, done. And it was working. Very promising. Next step then, uh, find all the stuff, not just the on off, and be able to modify everything. So, excuse me, so every bit is for one uh, yeah. thing that the controller can do? Yeah, maybe this and is the then, temperature, this okay. is the on-off. So every time it's sending, like, you should be on, you should be on, yeah. you should be on. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's sending, it's repeating this, this the state every time, right? Okay. 
even if it didn't change. Okay. So most of the time, I'm, I'm going to be sending the same. Um, what things I, I tried to find here, because there are things that I still don't know what they were. But I care about the fan speed, like if it's blowing a lot of air or little air, the temperature, the target temperature, the current temperature, <coughs> the mode, because it has heating and cooling, um, and not so much. Like I just had to find this, these few things. The mode is easy, right? Like it's either mode one or two or three, like cooling, heating, or ventilation, I don't know. But the temperatures were a bit tricky because, uh, well, one of them is trickier than the other, right? Because there's one that I set 21, what, 21 degrees, and I see the number. And 22 degrees is another number, so I can, I can try it. But the current temperature is a bit trickier because I cannot set the value I want. Well, actually, I more or less can because I can use a lighter to heat up the the sensor, and then it displays the temperature it's reading. <laughs> so I could heat it and, and, and write down the the, 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 the temperature and the, and the volume binary, right? So I plotted the, the points uh, in Fahrenheit. I use Fahrenheit because there's one degree is smaller, like it's more discrete. So the reading was in whole numbers, it had no decimals. So I thought in Fahrenheit I'm getting more resolution, right? But then I got this ugly formula, like from the binary data to the actual Fahrenheit, I got this weird formula. And I was like, I mean, there's some th someone who actually coded this, this formula inside the AC, right? In the company who built the AC. So this looks super weird. I would never program that. But when I converted it to Celsius, I'm like, oh, oh, this looks a lot like this. And this is beautiful. This makes a lot of sense. What this means is, for each unit in binary, I increase a half of a degree. So I have increases of half of a degree each time. And it's all offset by 15, because the, the minimum we can measure is, uh, is not 0, it's 15. So it starts at 15, and then it, it increases in, in quarters of a degree, not, not Excuse me, one question. In the previous graph, you measure, you also measure the temperature, I don't understand that. So that the, it's giving you some bits, but how do you know the real temperature? Because on the display, on the, ah, on the it screen, shows the it shows the temperature, so I have the okay. two axes there. I see it. And then I can, I can, I can reverse engineer that. I can make a linear regression, it's not mm -hmm. nothing fancy. Okay, so 300, 350 lines of code was the whole uh, modifying the whole state of the device, right? This lets me change uh, everything. Like I'm almost there. But the only, oh, but ha how are you changing it? Like I'm it, hard coding it, it for now. Okay. It, so this has no okay. interface. Right. So the next <laughs> step is adding a, a some API or some way for me to actually tell it uh, what to do and. Here I need to start changing things, right? I wanted it to connect through Wi-Fi, so Arduino is not very good for that. It can do it like there, like extension circuits, but it's the, the hardware is quite slow. So I changed to an ESP uh, thing. This is super common in all the smart things that if you have any smart thing at home, probably use one of these. It's like an Arduino. It supports the Arduino interface and everything but it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in, and it's way faster. Like, the, it can run code faster. Um, another non-free software, because that's not, not, not free hardware, um, and another thing that is not free here are the, um, the services to use Google Home and these kind of things. I found one that is free to use, so you talk to them and they talk to Google, because I'm not big enough to talk to Google, uh, so I have to use their SDK. That service is not free either, and it increased my code by a lot. It's like almost double the code just to talk through the internet with uh, with Google. But it works. 
you have to believe me, of course. I, I mean, <laughs> until now you have to believe me, so you still have to believe me. The next step is my, my girlfriend complained about having this in the living room. So I wanted to uh, remove this from my wall. And what I did was design a nice um, PCB board, again using free software. KiCad, awesome. You place the components, you generate the whole circuit, it's very easy. Like this is the ESP that I will plug here. And these are the two uh, bidirectional logic converters that we mentioned earlier. And this is uh, uh, a way for it to power the ESP from the same 12 volts that I get from the AC. Like this is a power converter uh, that lowers from 12 to 5. And this is the final design. And you pay 10 bucks and you get it from China. They print it. Uh, it's super easy to like, I mean, it's, it's easier than I thought. Like it's very accessible. Like you can do this. In a few days you have it at home. You can put your name. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so you can say, look mom, I did this and, and she believes. Um, <laughs> And this is a bit redundant because I brought the thing. Um, and this is after soldering, like you can pay a bit more and they put the, the, the components. I didn't because I'm cheap. So I bought the components myself and soldered them. That's why this is the final, this is the thing I have at home in my ceiling, controlling the actual air conditioning. And it's soldered like crap because I don't know what I'm doing when I do these things. So it's, the, the components are like, whoa, but it works. Wait, so you bought one to show us? The minimum you can order is like 10. Really? Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so <you> paid 10 <laughs> bucks I paid 10 bucks for I paid 10 bucks for five, I think. But you said the minimum was 10. The minimum was five then. It was the minimum was not one. <laughs> and this is the actual thing working in theory. Okay, Google. Turn on the AC. Okay, turn on the AC. AC being okay, well, voice control. What's the AC temperature? So you said the, the, the ESP thingy, mm -hmm. it's basically transparent, like if it was an Arduino, it would still work, it, kind of. Maybe not the SDK code for the Wi-Fi, but the rest would work. Yeah, so the ESP has two modes, one is Arduino emulation, okay. and one is like um, ESP fully fledged mode, I don't know, I, apparently it's faster, but I don't care because for Arduino, you have all the libraries, like for the Wi-Fi. From the Arduino SDK, you do add Wi-Fi, and it works. It's super easy. Like Arduino did an amazing job standardizing all these things, and it's super easy to do. Um, so a lot of hardware manufacturers now are supporting that because people are, are used to it. Like I don't know. Even like I use the Arduino IDE to code for the ESP. Okay. Yeah, they even integrate with that. So I'm. I, just, I was wondering if you have a picture of this installed in your no. with all the cables. Yeah, uh, it's a bit hidden, like I actually put it on top of the ceiling, so um, I bought a nice box for it, and <coughs> it just you have a black box with three cables coming out of it, it's beautiful, but you cannot see it, like only I can see it. Um, you know in your heart that you did that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I could be lying to you. I thought about taking a picture or even removing it uh, to bring it here, but I was too lazy, sorry. Um, take my word. How do you write the ESP? Like, you have to put code in it. Yeah. Uh, so it has a USB 
Ah, okay. Ah, connection. So, like, you SSH into it or, or what? <laughs> or no, from the IP, ah, you press play. Right, you press play and it knows the magic to do... Yeah, it writes the... <coughs> I imagine you build the, you build the firmware with the Arduino and after that, the firmware is transferred to the, to the ESP. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's like, I don't know if you've used Arduino. I'm guessing, I didn't, I didn't use... But it's the same, like, you okay. plug it through USB. Yeah. And actually, when it's, once it's programmed, this is the actual chip. So in theory, if I wasn't lazy, I don't need to have the whole thing here. The whole thing here is the programming board, right? This is the actual chip where the code is. So in theory, I could just solder this and never again be able to plug it through the USB. I kept it because maybe I sometimes need to update the firmware of the thing. I hope not. The first chip after the USB, that's a USB to series converter. Yeah. And it's, it also has a firmware. So yeah. you can flash this particular thing and then you can make this be a key, uh, keyboard or a mouse or whatever. What if you change the Wi-Fi password? You have to tie it to the ceiling? It's, uh, when it's, it's really cool. Like, I use one of these libraries that are pre-made for Arduino and it's really cool. It, um, when it cannot connect to the Wi-Fi, it creates its own Wi-Fi and you connect to that Wi-Fi to give it the, you see the list of uh, uh, SSIDs and you put the password of yours. So it's very, very easy to use. And it even has like a module for over-the-air upda updates. So you, could, you, can you can flash the firmware without plugging it in. Like <coughs> super, super easy to use. One of these libraries for, for Arduino for Wi-Fi. Or someone is setting up this Wi-Fi while you are trying to set yours. If you get with that Wi-Fi, then you then you have to go up the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not secure in that sense. But yeah. You don't need a password to enter the device. No. No. Um, and my like what they what they would be able to do is to flash something on the device. But I don't think they can read my... They can change the temperature? <laughs> no, that, that's what I was thinking, right? <laughs> we'll just make you super hot. <laughs> that's like <laughs> oh, yeah, they, they, if they had the code, which is open source, so... Yeah. Be, yeah. So there is... <laughs> <laughs> now we know what you're doing. Exactly. What was the repo? There is a way. And yeah, I don't know, if, if, you, care, if you actually care about the repo, since I, I put the links... What's your, um, what's your address? Yeah, github.com slash Albert I didn't put the last stakes because I don't want to like do any publicity to the guys that I use for Google Home. Like, also, I don't know, I have my API key and everything there. I have to remove it to upload it. Anyway, that's not public. It's kind of, kind of shitty though that you cannot do the own stuff in Google. In Alexa, you can write your own app. Google has a list of uh, partners, and you have to be one of them to to talk to them. So yeah. So the next talk, this is a challenge. Will be someone hacking your head. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Challenge yeah, accepted. No, I can't, I can't the so you cannot use the controller on the wall anymore. I can. I can. Yes. So how so, does it work? Yeah, I have some. So okay, when I detect. So I save the last state that I received from the wall. If I detect a change there, I say, okay, someone is actually pressing buttons on the wall. That, that overrides. That, that wins. Yes. Because okay. I wanted the thing on the wall to, to still work. So yeah, yeah, I had to do that. Good, good point. Something interesting, the mosques ACs, the infrared ones, they also send all the time all the information, which is kind of shitty because when you decode a remote for a TV, it only changes like channel up, channel down. But when you do that for ACs, you need a special Arduino because it uses too much memory. And things like that. Okay. It's all, all the time sending. Yeah, when you yeah. press the button, it not only sends what you change, it sends everything else. So when you replay that, everything will change at once, right? Yeah, the, the reason regarding air conditioning is sending information constantly is because some of them done it's, it's not the same behavior uh, with one gap with one temperature gap than another one. 
So when the gap is just, you know, two degrees, the air conditioning actually is not working as, as uh, plenty as 10 degrees, for instance. This is, uh, I don't remember the name. Uh, logic, I don't remember the name. It's uh, another way of logic. It's, it's a typical example. Do you have any further, further steps, like any anything for this? No, 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 it's no, perfect. It's <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe you don't can, don't have you ever uh, thought of using common computers or something like this, other things can be open source? Yeah, I have a lot of things at home that work with Google Home, so it's a lot of work to change now. Um, but yeah, there are open source alternatives to Google Home, it's true. What about the current uh, temperature? Because you only have Spanish. one thermometer, right? Like one way. So, have you thought of adding another one, like in your room, for example, in your bedroom? So, or, or it works, so it's good enough. Yeah, it's good enough. I, I, I could do these kind of things, yeah. Like, but then it's only one temperature for the whole house, right? So I could decide which one I use, but it's well, it will be one. I, I'm asking because I've done that, and Yeah, really, I, 